My name is Alyssa. I've been married to my husband, Smith, for three years. I work as an insurance sales agent. Although I have flexible hours, I work on commission, so sometimes I get home later than Smith. During busy periods, Smith has always been there for me, running his small business. We had a pretty good arrangement. I didn't have much time for housework, and Smith didn't mind doing it. But the issue has always been with my sister-in-law. My in-laws are really great people who have never mistreated me. However, sister-in-law is super attached to Smith. From the beginning of our relationship, she's been causing me problems. Despite multiple warnings from my in-laws, Smith has always taken her side. We argue about it now and then, but since we only see sister-in-law a few times a year, I didn't make a big deal about it. However, that doesn't mean I don't hold some resentment towards her. For example, I like a particular brand. While I don't splurge on it, I do buy things I want from my own savings or by working extra hard. She once accused me of getting those items from Smith and even stole from me. This happened when we went to my in-law's house for a Christmas visit. When we walked into the living room, sister-in-law was already a few drinks in. Ah, Smith, you're back. Yeah, you're already drinking. It's Christmas. Come join me. Oh, all right then, as Smith was about to say. But I interrupted. We haven't even greeted everyone yet, and we're not staying the night. You know if you start drinking now, we won't be able to drive home, I said. She scoffed. Geez, what a strict wife. It's fine. Smith can just stay here. Why do you need to go back together? I retorted, so that's what comes to your mind before even saying Merry Christmas? She then annoyingly leaned on Smith and whined, Smith, Alyssa is bullying me. I was so disgusted by Smith's failure to push sister-in-law away that I headed to the kitchen. Mother-in-law, Merry Christmas, I said. It seems that mother-in-law was so wrapped up in preparing a full-course Christmas meal and party that she didn't hear our exchange. Oh, you're here. Sorry, I didn't notice. Merry Christmas. Is Smith not here? Smith is in the living room with sister-in-law. Oh, Smith didn't even greet me. I apologize. No worries. It's not your fault, I replied. As she said that, mother-in-law heated towards the living room. I followed her and found Smith evidently unable to refuse an offer to drink with sister-in-law. Mother-in-law saw this and said, Smith, what are you doing here without even saying hello? Well, Nora was feeling lonely so we decided to have a drink together. You should have greeted us first. I was wondering why only Alyssa came to greet us. I couldn't turn down the drink. Smith mumbled something, looking down. But I ignored him and took my seat. Just then, as I put my purse on the chair, sister-in-law perked up and started talking. Wow, is that a new purse? Nice. I had a bad feeling and promptly placed the purse back on my lap. Sister-in-law looked visibly annoyed and said, I can't afford one, Smith. I want one, too. Well, I didn't buy it then, give me Alyssa. What? How dare you say that? You don't have to give it to her. It's expensive, right? Who would hand over an item worth at least a few thousand, especially when it's practically brand new? I gave sister-in-law a dry laugh. If you want one, go buy it yourself. You live at home, so if you work decently, you can afford it. True. Sister-in-law lives at home but only works part-time about three days a week. She probably can't even afford the cheapest purse I own. This new purse was a favorite of mine, reserved with a deposit as soon as I heard from the shop clerk that it was coming in. There's no way I would easily give that up, especially not to sister-in-law. Then Smith started saying something outrageous. Hey, give that to Nora. What? You have plenty? It won't hurt to give away just one. Do you even know how much it costs? If you have so many, what's the problem? No way, I even paid a deposit to get this. Stingy. Could you please not talk like a child? Are you even an adult? I've just started using this brand new bag so I can't give it away. I have no intention of giving away any of my other bags either. Stingy? With that, sister-in-law stormed off to her room. Smith also stood up, following her. You went too far, and since you're not giving it, you should apologize. I won't see my sister-in-law after Christmas, so it doesn't matter, I thought, but I was wrong. A few days after Christmas, as I was preparing to go to a hotel lunch with my friends, I opened my closet to grab a purse, but it was missing from the bag where I stored it. Frustrated, I went straight to Smith's place. 
Smith seemed upset to see me walk in, but began to look anxious when he noticed I was holding the empty bag. What? I don't know anything about it. Maybe you left it at your parents' house, he said. I haven't even said anything yet. Don't you know you gave it to your sister, didn't you? I retorted. I told you I don't know. Maybe you left it somewhere like at your parents' house, he insisted. Fine, I'll search your parents' house. Then, I'll also call them. If I don't find it, I'm reporting it to the police. It's an expensive bag. If someone broke in, that's a big deal, I said firmly. Smith turned pale at the mention of the police, but quickly retorted, even if the same purse is there, maybe Nora bought it herself. I took a card out of the shopping bag and showed it to Smith. It's a limited edition with a serial number. There's no way it's the same. My sudden visit surprised them, but they let me into my sister-in-law's room. When I explained the situation, my purse was easily found in the messy room, but it was in terrible condition. The bag had remnants of food and drink stains and seemed beyond repair. Even my mother-in-law was at a loss for words. Suddenly, my sister-in-law, perhaps realizing someone was in her room, barged in, shouting, What are you doing? I told you not to come into my house. Just give me back my purse. Actually, you can keep it. Just give me the money back, I demanded. What are you talking about? I bought it, probably coordinated with Smith, my sister-in-law said, smugly. I told her the same thing I had told Smith. I've already explained this to Smith, so you should pay me back. But Smith gave it to me. It's mine. And it was a gift. So it doesn't matter, she insisted. Here was my sister-in-law acting like a child even in her 30s. It was more pathetic than annoying. At this point, my head was starting to hurt. But wasting a few thousand was out of the question. All right, I'll file a police report. It's theft, right? My mother-in-law reacted. Please, no police. She's still my daughter. I'll cover it, and Nora can pay me back from her salary, she pleaded. My mother-in-law looked at me with tearful eyes. It tugged at my heartstrings, but I couldn't let it go. How about sister-in-law pays from her salary instead? If there's even one late payment, I'll file that police report, I suggested. What? Why should I pay? My sister-in-law protested. Be quiet. I won't let her go out so I'll manage her bank account that her salary goes into until everything is paid back. This doesn't make sense, I insisted. I left my mother-in-law to handle the situation and went home, still pondering how to deal with Smith. Then a plan came to mind. I'll probably end up divorcing him, but it doesn't matter anymore. The day of reckoning was approaching. Months later, the day had come. We had gone to my in-law's house for some reason. Today was the day our new home would be finished. We had been invited by my in-laws to celebrate, and my bag was packed with divorce papers. The atmosphere was pleasant at first during the dinner. I might not even have to hand these divorce papers over, I thought. But Smith disappointed me as usual. Hey, I wanted a house too. Give it to me, he demanded. Just as I suspected, my in-laws' eyes bulged out at the ridiculous request. Father-in-law choked on his tea, and mother-in-law was speechless. And then, I waited for Smith's response. I'll give it to Nora. She won't be able to buy a home anyway. We can just build another one if you oppose. We're getting a divorce, he declared. Too bad. I wished it was just drunk talk, but he looked serious. I hated the face he made, smiling while leaning on sister-in-law. Sighing, I said, Fine, let's divorce. You can have the house. What? Yes! Yay! I got my dream home. Sister-in-law was jubilant, but I didn't care. You get your dream life with sister-in-law in our home, Smith, I remarked dryly. The contrast couldn't have been starker. A jubilant sister-in-law, a frozen Smith, and me. I handed over the pre-filled divorce papers with a smile. I would have reconsidered if you'd objected. Good luck, I said. Smith seemed to realize what I meant and seemed deeply apologetic but I had already left the table and didn't look back. In hindsight, maybe I should have watched his reaction. A few days later, we discussed asset division through lawyers. My in-laws must have talked some sense into him as he agreed rather easily. Months passed. I was living alone in an apartment I bought before marriage, peacefully taking care of my cat. Then, sister-in-law showed up. When I opened the door, there she was, deeply apologetic. I'm sorry, help me, she pleaded. Who are you? Don't talk like that. We were family once. I don't recognize people like you as family. 
You're the one who said that, right? Besides, we're divorced, so we're literally strangers now. Please, I can't make it on my own, I replied firmly. On a closer look, my sister-in-law was in rags. No wonder Smith's earnings were less than the average temp jobs in the area. I said I'd leave the house, but I never said anything about continuing to pay the mortgage. The mortgage built around my income would be too much for Smith to handle. I bet the loan alone would swallow up his paycheck. Originally, the home was built so I could live there with Smith. But now, I don't care anymore. I never thought Smith would earn so little. Neither did I. Smith is what you'd call a freelance writer. If he writes, he makes money. If he doesn't, well, no income. Smith hates working. He gets sick if he has to do regular work outside. So, a regular job is out of the question for him. He's tried it before but quit after a few months. So he was content doing housework while I was the main breadwinner. I provided almost all of our living expenses, and even the down payment on the house came from my savings. I found out that Smith boasted about how he funded our lifestyle and splurged on luxury items without contributing to living expenses. And when we got divorced, I learned he had even taken on debt. Want to guess what the debt was for? Presents for sister-in-law? I knew something was off when I saw high-end clothes and accessories scattered in sister-in-law's room. Items she couldn't afford on a part-time job. My suspicions led me to discover thousands of dollars in debt on Smith's credit card. Sure, he could pay it off if he worked. But let's be real. Someone accustomed to a laid-back lifestyle isn't going to suddenly work hard. Why not sell the house then? We've been caught off guard by mom and dad. They've sold our house and moved away. If we sell, we have nowhere to go. That caught me off guard. While my in-laws had always been soft on my harassing sister-in-law, I thought they would never actually abandon her. But it seems they had finally reached their breaking point. No surprise there. With Smith falsifying his income and stealing the house from me and sister-in-law sticking to him like glue, and then there's the home loan in tens of thousands of dollars, even loving parents have their breaking point. It's what you chose, right? A home with just you and Smith. But Smith told me to sell my gifts, to work because we can't sell the house. That's on you. It's painful to see a 32-year-old crying at the doorstep. Actually, Smith is 10 years older than me. And in Believe It or Not, sister-in-law is 8 years older than me. It's just pathetic that no one had set them straight before. But that's a separate issue. Why should I help people who've mistreated me all this time? I'll be going freelance a month after the divorce. I have my professional connections from my diplomat days, so I'll be just fine. But that's for my future, not for the downtrodden sister-in-law standing in front of me. Now please, can you at least take over half the mortgage? I couldn't help but burst out laughing which enraged sister-in-law, her face turning beet red. What the heck? I'm begging you. Let me make this clear. No, I won't pay the mortgage. Why should I pay for a house I no longer live in? But you're the sister-in-law. So I'm no longer your sister-in-law, got it? If you keep this up, I'm calling the cops. Do you want a criminal record too? My sister-in-law was startled by the mention of the police and scampered away. It's likely that Smith and she will have to fend for themselves from here on out. They're both adults. They should get what they want with their own efforts.